Hello Cactus friends, welcome back to the channel. We're in the beautiful state of Querétaro in Mexico and we're here to look for the fattest and chunkiest of all Lophophora cactus species, which is Lophophora diffusa. It's also the southernmost Lophophora and we're here to see not only that beauty but also all of its amazing neighbors like the one we showed you on the last episode, Strombocactus diciformis. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure to check that one out because it's amazing. What a beautiful ecosystem and it has some incredible neighbors that are just as interesting. So make sure you don't miss that one and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes because we still have some very nice expeditions from Chile to show you all. Join us on this adventure as we try to document every single one of the more than 1800 species of cacti in the world so that hopefully you all fall in love with them and their ecosystems and help us fight to protect them. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome. I hope you like cacti. We make nothing but content related to cacti and succulents in both cultivation and in the wild to try to highlight the importance of their conservation. Remember, take nothing but pictures from nature. We begin our journey surrounded by the same vertical gardens where we saw Strombocactus diciformis on the previous episode, but this time we'll be focusing on the valleys in between these vertical walls looking for one of the first Lophophora species to ever be described. Lophophora diffusa lives on these limestone hills which are covered by both thorny and unarmed microphyllous shrubs, both of which serve as nurse plants for these beautiful cacti. So we'll do our best to navigate this terrain without getting pricked too much. Their habitat ranges in elevation starting from around 5,000 feet above sea level, and most of the individuals we'll see seem to prefer light shade in habitat. Although I came all the way down to the state of Querétaro mostly to see Lophophora diffusa and a couple of other species, it was equally impressive to see a lot of these other plants that live in these beautiful environments, like these giant Myrtilocactus geometrisans. How old do you estimate these have to be in order to achieve these sizes in such arid landscapes? As is the case for other Lophophora species and most cacti in general, once you spot one or two in the wild, it's a lot easier to find a lot more. Not only because it means you're in the right location, but also because your eyes become accustomed to the shape and size of the species and they start popping up everywhere. I always give soft-bodied cacti like these Lophophora a little squeeze to get a sense of just how much rain they've received in the past few weeks, always being extra careful not to damage your skin. Although Querétaro is one of Mexico's smallest states, its geography is incredibly diverse, hosting ecosystems from deserts to tropical rainforests. It's divided into five regions like the Sierra Gorda where we are now, which is a mountain range that's part of the Sierra Madre Oriental that spans 620 miles from the U.S. border down to Puebla. It wasn't long before we started finding very tiny seedlings which if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you know is one of my favorite things to see in habitat, 
It's always a good sign that the ecosystem is healthy and regenerating. But we had to continue our expedition, because although seedlings are nice, I really wanted to see some nice chunky ladies. Believe it or not, the ground that I'm walking on used to be the same height as the cliff you see behind me, and has been slowly eroded away by the very scarce rainfall in this area, which just goes to show you just how powerful a little bit of rain can be if given enough time. So imagine just how powerful us human beings can become if we just put in the work and have a little bit of patience and faith. Unlike its Williamsii cousins in the north, Lophophora diffusa is not self-fertile. So if you have one of these beauties in cultivation, you'll need to set it up with a boyfriend in order to produce seed. None of the specimen we saw had any blooms or any remnants of blooms on them, probably because we came during the drought. And just like other cacti, these plants are opportunistic and they'll take advantage of any rain they can get throughout the year to produce blooms and seed. I'm happy to report that all the ecosystems we found Lophophora diffusa in were plentiful and we could find lots of individuals everywhere we looked, which is a great change of pace compared to other species like Lophophora williamsii and that's likely due to the fact that these plants produce little to no psychoactive alkaloids and that greatly reduces the threat of poaching. Thank you so much for joining another one of our adventures. Remember to take only pictures and habitat, never the plants or the animals, and visit our website eastcoastcamanchaca.com if you'd like to find any cacti from cultivation, pots, potting soil, or cactus t-shirts. See you on the next episode. <laughs>